Hello, I'm Bob Weeks for Wichita Liberty TV, your weekly source for news, analysis, and commentary about Kansas and Wichita government and public affairs. Broadcast on Great Plains Television, that's channel 26.1, Sunday morning at 8.30, and again in the afternoon at 4.30. Also on YouTube, at my site, The Voice for Liberty, at wichitaliberty.org. You'll find all the old episodes there, show notes about today's episodes and other episodes, and of course all the other content that I and others produce there almost every day. Today our special guest is Kansas Representative Ron Reichman. He represents District 78, which is in the city of Olathe in Johnson County. He's also the Speaker of the Kansas House of Representatives, which is the top leadership position. We'll ask him a little bit about what that means in a moment. He started his first term in 2013, was selected to be Speaker at the start of this legislative session, and uh, actually Ron Reichman Jr., because your mm -hmm. father was in the legislature too. So yes. Ron Reichman Jr., welcome to Wichita Liberty. TV. Bob Carl, thanks for having me. Well, and Carl Peter John, of course, there too. So, um, I'm your guest host, not on the yeah. legislature. <laughs> well, I think most of our viewers know that the speaker is the top official of a legislative body. So, what specifically are the duties of the speaker, such as yourself? Well, like you mentioned, we were uh, was elected by my, my peers in December, mm -hmm. and from there you kind of hit the ground running with uh, setting the, the committee chairs mm -hmm. and who serves on the committees, uh, and even the, the type of committees. We we introduced two new committees this year. One dealt with uh, internet security, another with water, two issues that, that are definitely facing our state that need a little more um, intense look at. Mm -hmm. um, we, we set the offices um, where people sit on the floors. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when the session starts, when bills are introduced, we then assign to what committee the bills go to. Mm -hmm. And you have a staff. I can see a couple of them are here with you, but because that's a pretty big job, isn't it? Yes, this, our, our staff is wonderful. Uh, that help us with with the legislative uh, research as well as c helping folks communicate, understand the bills, um, and then of course set appointments and try to keep track of me. Mm -hmm. I notice also that you are Vice Chair of Legislative Coordinating Council. Senate President Susan Wagle of Wichita is the chair of that. What does the Legislative Coordin Coordinating Council do? Well, that's the, the, uh, the council that basically made up of the leadership of both the, the Senate and the House. Mm -hmm. And when the, we're not in session, we basically provide over the, the State House uh, different things. We kind of manage the budget, the legislative budget. In fact, I think we had a meeting yesterday and we assigned the different interim committees, mm -hmm. uh, set the number of, uh, of members on the committee, the number of days they would meet. Um, and of course, I think, you know, again, this is the money that's already been appropriated to the legislature. We can oversee how it's being spent. So I think a lot of people might be surprised to learn that although our regular session runs from January to May or maybe June, um, that there's still quite a bit of action that happens during the off season, so to speak. Yeah, there's obviously the, our, our state uh, needs governing every day of the, of the year, mm -hmm. and uh, we are a citizen legislature, so we, we can't be in session all year. No one wants that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's topics that there's not time for during the session, ones that need a little deeper dive. And so we do have interim topics that will come up, and uh, that's one of the things we worked on yesterday in, inside that, that committee. You know, I think a lot of people are shocked to learn that in the state of Texas, their legislature meets just every other year. And a few years ago, Kansas adopted a biennial budget. In other words, the budgeting process contemplates two years into the future. Might it be possible or desirable that Kansas moves to just meeting every other year? You know, that'd be up for the, the will of the people in our body. I could definitely like to see information on that. Um, I know my family would probably appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you want to do the, the, the work uh, that you're sent there for and make sure you can get it done and, and uh, first represent the citizens and do its best for Kansas. Because it is difficult for uh, people to serve, especially young people such as yourself who are working in a business or career or something, to take four or five months out of your life every year and spend them in Topeka. Well, like I said, it's it's we're a citizen legislature, mm -hmm. and you, you need to have a, another source of income to be able to to, to serve, and it is a balance uh, between family, business, and the legislature. Mm -hmm. You know, we have um, going to have a new governor pretty soon. I think uh, Lieutenant Governor Jeff Collier, as Sam Brownback, uh, when he gets confirmed to be in his new ambassadorship, do you have any idea how Lieutenant Governor Collier might be different than Governor Brownback, and how relationship with the legislature might be different? Well, Lieutenant Governor Collier, he was a legislator. He was both serving the House mm -hmm. and the Senate, so he's very familiar with the, with the building. Uh, he has a different set of life experiences, you know, with his work as a surgeon and his humanitarian work overseas. He'll have a different, uh, I mean, the look and uh, lens to view things from. 
I, I'm looking forward to serving with him and working alongside him. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he spoke, Carl, at the Wichita Pachyderm Club a couple weeks ago, Lieutenant Governor Collier did, and after that people came up to me and said, you know, it doesn't sound like he's planning to run again in 2018, but then I think a few days <laughs> later he did officially announce that he will be a candidate next year. Absolutely. and. Uh, do you see a focus on medical issues? Because he played a large role in the Medicaid reform, and uh, and I would like to get your take on that. But we are about to run out of time for we this are, segment, so let's, so let's Ms. Speaker Reichman save that for the next one. Answer that for the next segment. Thanks for helping me there, Carl. So we'll be back in just a moment for another segment of Wichita Liberty TV. Well, welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. Our guest this week, Speaker of the Kansas House of Representatives, Ron Reichman. Carl, you were asking about how might uh, Lu uh, Governor Collier be different based upon his medical background? Well, and I think also policy background because the Medicaid reforms that had occurred uh, early on in the Brownback administration had come through his office. And we're in the situation where uh, socialized medicine is failing. And uh, we've talked about Obamacare expansion here in Kansas. I'd like to get Speaker Reich Reichman's comments on uh, where, where we're going in the medical area, because I think that's going to be a big issue going forward. Well, I think that's one of the, the benefits of having uh, Dr. Coyer be our, be our governor. Like you mentioned, the reforms through can care, where the focus was on was on the patient, on the person, trying to find preventative care. Uh, in, in that type of focus, it's, it's been paying off for, uh, still had some, some things we had to work on, some tweaks to, to move forward. Uh, but again, you're trying to put the, the patient and the person first and look for ways to be preventive. That's basically what they're trying to do with can care. Um, and obviously last session and this, this next session, there's a, will be a focus on, on, the, on, the, on the, the medic, on the, on the expansion or, or, or not. Um, I think a lot of us are looking to see what's going on in DC. Um, a lot of promises were made about changes and so mm -hmm. we're hoping to see some. And nothing happened. So uh, yeah, we were, went over that with Representative Estes a couple of weeks ago. Well, on the federal level, but from the state side of it, um, do you see the Medicaid reforms that were implemented by, um, during, well, Lieutenant Governor Collier and Governor Brownback, do you think that on the net they've been positive or do you think they need more and we need to go in a different direction? No, I, th I think that they've been positive. Like any major reform, there it's not perfect. And our Can Kite Oversight Committee has been uh, working hard to, to help the administration and help our those of, of need and of services to to, to better the system. Um, again, going back to Dr. Collier, the, it's it's a complicated system. The the billing, the services, the re the type of reimbursements, the matches between the federal government and what the Kansas taxpayers have to pay. It, it can be very complicated, and um, it, but again the 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 basis of the idea of the program was to find prevention and try to keep people um, as healthy as possible. Since it's likely to be an issue, do you see, uh, obviously school finance is a, is a big issue out there. Does your crystal ball looking forward for next year? Are, are there bigger issues out on the horizon than, than say the uh, Obamacare, Medicaid expansion, and uh, um, or, or anything else? That, would jump up as, as uh, something people need to be paying be paying attention to right now. Yeah, I believe next session will will uh, the expansion and also um, school finance will be two topics that are being discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some, I think, more proactive things we're going to be working on and continuing with the uh, performance based budgeting. Hope we have a chance to talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. and kind of get into deeper dive in some of the. Uh, recommendations from our efficiency study. Those are things, again, you mentioned the two-year budget. Mm -hmm. And this, that's, those things allow us to spend more time and get in more detail uh, in the second year of that, that budget cycle. Since you brought up school finance, we've had, uh, of course, a new school finance uh, formula that was adopted this year seems to be basically the same as the old one, a lot of people would say. But this summer, just a month ago, we had arguments in front of the Kansas Supreme Court trying to decide whether the amount of funding and maybe something else is adequate. Do we have any idea of when that decision will be released? Well, I'm probably not the right one to, to ask that question. Um, I believe the two of the last three school finance formulas I've worked on, the courts don't out. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure we they <laughs> we agree with each other on, um, what, um, at least on the timing. 
we anticipate almost every Friday a ruling can come out mm -hmm. or a, 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 the opinion. And uh, so we're, we're ready to, to look at it and review it and, and then, of course, respond. And, of course, the responses, I suppose, could range from the court being satisfied with what the legislature did to saying, no, you have to spend a lot more, I guess. It could be anywhere uh, within that uh, spectrum there. So we had um, some work that was done this year in the legislature. Some of us may agree or not, but uh, one of the things was tax increases. We did um, uh, have a tax increase this year. And after the Senate, uh, the session, a Majority Leader Don Heinemann wrote a column about this, and he said that raising taxes was the only responsible option available. State government has been cut to the point where there is no reasonable way to reduce spending enough to balance the budget. Uh, was he right on that and in, in that? There's always waste you, could, you can find in government. You know, it's amount, how do you, how do you find it? But I also point out that when we ran the budget on the floor, I think we had two amendments to, to lower the budget. Mm -hmm. One was to cut Chris Kolbach, Secretary Kolbach's travel expenditures. Okay. <laughs> and, and the other one was under a million dollars and was successful. Then the representative re-spent it on the project that, that was important to him in the rest of the state. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's part of the reality of, of what we're, we're facing as far mm -hmm. as, in, in the hole that we had um, was, was pretty significant. Mm -hmm. Uh, we could make choices like not to fund our CAPERS payment. We chose not to do that. Yeah. Well, I don't know, reining in uh, the Secretary of State's travel budget, that might have filled up a large part of that hole. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to be back in just a moment with another segment of Wichita Liberty TV. Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks with our guest, Kansas Speaker of the House, Ron Reichman, and Carl Peter John, our co-host here. So, yeah, very difficult to uh, cut government spending. There was, I know, a proposal for, that came out of the efficiency study that the governor had in his budget proposal, I believe, saving about $47 million in general fund spending if we were to revise, reform the way that Kansas school employees uh, purchased, obtained their health insurance, I believe. But that did not pass. Why? That seems like something people are saying, why can't we get things like that done? Yeah, the, uh, I think it's one of the recommendations that came from the A&M study. Mm -hmm. And the, the implementation is still, we're still working through it. The okay. governor put it in his budget a year too soon. Okay. Um, wasn't practical to implement that quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, uh, our own auditors, we've had them spend some time on it, uh, the legislative post audit, where they came in and kind of took the A&M recommendation and, and broke it down to see what's possible and what we can do. From that, the House uh, passed additional study that, that can happen and, and put a work group together. Mm -hmm. Some of the, the actual the people inside the school districts and some of the taxpayers together say, how can we make this a reality? Uh, that's, that's a recommendation that uh, a lot of the schools are giving some pushback because they really, like, control how they have their own education. Here in Wichita, it's a big deal to them. They have, you have a, a very uh, healthy um, health insurance policy for the teachers. Um, and all we ask is for people to come to the table and listen and say, how can we make this work? Mm -hmm. um, and not come with a, a list of things, there's no way this can happen. Sometimes we get that, in, in, as you guys are aware of, inside government. We're just looking to say, come with an open mind, come with some things you can compromise on, and so we can have uh, savings for our taxpayers and still provide a, a quality service. Speaking of an open mind and something you mentioned a little bit earlier is performance-based budgeting, which as I know we're in the, somewhere in that process there. That is something I think that could hold the promise of either significant savings or improvements in service, but I don't know much about it yeah. really. Thanks, thanks for asking. That is um, something that, that when I first got in the legislature, uh, we heard that we need to perform space budgeting. And we asked the agencies to do that. Well, the, the information we came back was not something that's usable. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be, the process we go through is that we, we look at the budgets and say, this agency got $10 last year, they're asking for 11, let's give them $9.50. Mm -hmm. What we fail to do is to identify what core functions of government are and identify that with a dollar spent. Mm -hmm. And we're asking our agencies, in fact, we passed legislation to make it law. That requires it. Requires yeah. it that says, list out the services you provide and the amount of taxpayers' money that's associated with it. So then we can help them prioritize the taxpayers' money and how it's being spent. 
Um, and I think there's a distinction between programs that are mandated by law versus things we right. just do because we want to. And right. It, it, it's either a, at one point the legislature asked for this to happen or the agency decided to do it. But it's time for us to list what we're providing. There's probably duplications. I think agencies, different agencies do the same service. Let's find out what, a, first, is the, is the service still needed? Is it a core function of government? Mm -hmm. And then who does it the best? And if we prioritize it, then we'll, we'll put the funds according and to And Carl, you may remember, uh, it was quite a while ago, at Packadurm Club, Jason Watkins, when he was still a member of the legislature, uh, told us that, you know, uh, we get these government grants, and they fund a program for a couple of years, then the grant stops, but the program still goes on, but no one really knows about it. It seems like sometimes a lot of spending is on autopilot almost. And that's, again, the, that's what we're, one of the things we're going to focus on this year is performance-based budgeting. Uh, again, we had to pass legislation t in, in detail and to specify how we want it to look so we can digest it. And the second year of our, of our budget cycle, we should have it, uh, we'll have the opportunity. Last year, the study that came out identified a whole bunch of areas of sa potential savings. Uh, Bob mentioned Which is the, the A&M study. The A &M yes. study. Mm -hmm. uh, were there some other items from that study that you think should be looked at it next year? Yes, uh, we, um, in fact, we just sent a letter to all the agencies um, that's from the speaker's office and basically said, please list what studies, what, what you've implemented, what ones you haven't, and what are your, what's stopping you from doing so? How can we assist in that? Um, a lot of the, 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 the tweaks have been made administratively, very few have been made uh, legislatively. Um, I know our appropriations committee looked at some. Uh, we had our every budget committee look at them last year. Uh, but now we've had a little more time. Mm -hmm. Will the uh, interims be looking at any of these? Um, no, I think there was a couple of, uh, of studies that were a uh, task force that were created, but not a specific interim committee. Um, but it's definitely something we're pushing. Uh, we're, we were the first state legislature in the nation to implement this. Mm. Uh, most of the time it's been done by the, the governor's office, executive branch, uh, but it's something we took the initiative and, and uh, we're just in the beginning process of it, and we're going to keep working through it. So I know some people are frustrated, or they may note that, well, we had this efficient study, but no laws have been passed to implement it. But I think I hear you saying that many of the recommendations have been administered through administration, I'm sorry. A, a lot of them have. And the Department of uh, Transportation saved almost $25 million taking the recommendations. We look at the the prison being built in Lansing. That's coming from a that's coming from a, a recommendation to save taxpayers money and be more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, the again, you, you mentioned the, the the grouping of the insurance. Uh, again, the governor put in his budget to do so. Uh, it was just a year too early. It was not practical. There was no possibility to put that program in place that soon. Yeah, and you know the A and M study did. I think the number was $2 billion over five years of savings, mm -hmm. which is a lot of money. But um, I think as we're finding out, not everything is always politically possible to do. So we certainly know that. So let's take another moment off here at Wichita Liberty TV. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back again to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks, co-host Carl Peter John, our guest, Kansas Speaker of the House, Ron Reichman. So, uh, Speaker Reichman, you mentioned a moment ago prisons. Uh, prisons have been in the news this summer, and I think that today, on Thursday, the governor did make an announcement in El Dorado that prison salaries for the guards will be rising. Yes, and you know, we mentioned earlier, we have to identify what a core core service function of government is. And we, we all can agree, public safety mm -hmm. um, is, is one, of those, one of those services that we provide. And so we have to, to fund the, the agencies. Um, we've had issues with, with, with losing control of prisons. We've had some escapes. Um, we've, and a lot of that's due to the number of vacancies we have inside the departments. The actions today, on Thursday, from the governor did have a pay increases of 5 to 10 percent. The last two years, um, we have we've implemented two and three percent inc pay increases. There's still over 40 percent vacancies at El Dorado. Wow. El Dorado. Mm -hmm. But isn't this a broader problem because uh, we at the county at, here in Sedgwick, uh, our sheriff struggled with filling detention deputy positions, and I know other county sheriffs have run into this too. And I think part of it, it there's a war against law enforcement in some quarters today. I, I think that trickles, all we, you know, we, we have our local municipalities hiring police officers, hiring patrol, uh, public safety, you know, the, the men and women that, that serve and protect us every day need to be honored 
and, uh, and, and obviously being well funded is, is part of that. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned Lansing earlier too, so uh, this we are planning on a new prison in Lansing, is that right? Yes, uh, my, my freshman year I served on the Public Safety Transportation Budget Committee and the Secretary of Corrections coming in and talked about how they had to build a new prison and what that was going to cost and what the bond ratings would be. And, and we're, we're looking at how do we find, not have to have this big payment coming. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the uh, a &M study recommended was maybe the way the prisons are being built, that the savings from the efficiencies, the way it's being built, the number of staff that required to, to properly um, uh, staff a prison, the savings could come from that. So that's what we have now. We have a brand new prison that's being built in Lansing. It should not cost the, the taxpayers uh, a dime more. Mm -hmm. It will be paid for from the efficiencies of, of the staffing. Do you know what's going to happen to the old building? Because i got to tell you, that building is like a medieval castle. We <laughs> expect to be in the dungeon. I know the first time I ever saw that building, I said, ooh, I'm never going to do anything to put me in there. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've toured that, and it, it's, a, it's a deterrent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, uh, there's RFPs out now to find out exactly how it's going to be built and what's, I'm, I'm not sure the details of that, but. There's already a, muse a museum there, I think, isn't there? I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the probably the, the the best museum piece there is the guard tower that's in the center of the building that's so high you can't see the, it's not functional. You can't see the yard. <laughs> can't see the yard, oh well. Yeah. well let me um, proceed in the direction in terms of a broader budget question, and I've got a green eye shade on, but w there's comments about the bank of KDOT every year. Why don't we just roll all the off-budget items, which are primarily KDOT and the Medicaid funding from the feds, into the general fund budget, and eliminate a lot of the budget games, just, and I'll mention a couple of others, LAVTR and city-county revenue sharing, um, two programs that haven't been funded by the legislature for years, but keep because they're in the statutes, they're, they have to be projected into the budget, and so the media says, well, there's this huge budget deficit. Well, if you take this out, this shrinks it by hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, if, if the th if three of us, I think, would agree on doing this, as you know, in the legislature, it, it does take um, 63, 21 and 1. And, 20 and, 1 and, and sometimes that's a little more difficult, but I, I agree. The transparency of, of removing some of those, uh, it makes us it simplify it. Because you're right, people look in the out years and say, man, you're going to be this much under, but if we do our normal budgetary transfers that we do, or again, not fund some of the programs that historically haven't been funded, um, it definitely shrinks the number uh, down quite a bit. Well, let, let me ask you, we've got a city and county tax lid, and it has too many holes in it, in my opinion, but when I was on the county commission and had that privilege of serving in that capacity, I supported it, supported strengthening it, but why shouldn't we have this included with other governmental bodies in Kansas like they do in Missouri, Oklahoma, and Colorado? Well, again, the, the purpose of the tax lit is to, to bring transparency. Um, and you have the, that the citizens say this is what, what your money's been spent on. Mm -hmm. I know at least where I'm from in Johnson County, we had fairly large property tax increases. Um, and with that, I'm not for sure that the, the municipalities met up against the lids. Um, but, you know, anytime we can bring more transparency and openness, um, uh, to, to spend in, in, in Kansas or nation, it's, it's a good idea. Well, I know in our in our uh, Wichita City budget discussions this summer, um, the legislature was really scorned a lot for having that tax lid. I mean, the city manager uh, over and over would say, you know, mention the tax lid. So I don't think they like it very much. But uh, I'm kind of grateful that we have that lid well, a little I, bit. I would support giving cities and counties and local government. Through authority to set the mill levy and not just the dollar amount of the budget but that's really getting my green eye shade on firmly and we're running low on time you know well, we do have that problem in wichita i think like probably a lot of places do they they vote to spend a certain amount of money and the mill levy creeps up year after year just by fractions but over a period of time it turns out to be quite significant so but that's something people should know. So you're right, Carl. We are out of time today. So thanks, Carl. And thank you very much, Kansas mm -hmm. Speaker Ron Reichman. Uh, good luck next year in the, um, in the legislature with the new governor. And hopefully we'll get more stuff done. And that's it again for Wichita Liberty TV this week. Thanks for watching. And we'll be back next week. <laughs>